Hello, Heating Thousand here from ThousandFantasy.com and today we're going to be looking at how to export World Machine data into Blender. So I've got my World Machine file set up, very basic. So this is the terrain we're going to be importing into Blender. So to get started in exporting, we want to get two nodes, two bitmap outputs and a height output. The bitmap outputs are for our normal map and for our diffuse map. Our height output node will be used to displace geometry in Blender. Please note that only height field data can go into height field sockets and bitmap data can only go into bitmap sockets. So we're going to start by taking our texture and putting it into one of the bitmap outputs. To generate our normal data we want to go up to the converter tab at the top. We then want to select normal map maker. After we drop that down, we want to input our height field data into the input socket of our normal map maker. Here I'm just organizing the wires. It is really important in World Machine to have a really clean document because it can become quite messy quite quickly. So there we go, I just plugged in the bitmap into the bitmap output. So there we got our normal and our diffuse map set up. So next what we want to do is we want to put our height field data into the height output. So I'm just going to create a new point on this wire and drag it into the height field input. Now that we've done that, we want to dictate where we want our files to be exported to. To do that, we'll double click our node. So I'm going to do that to the height option first. And then I'm going to select what type of file type I want. In this case, I'm just going to use a 16-bit PNG. Now that we've selected our output format, we can now set our output directory. So just hit set and then navigate to a directory that you wish to export to. After that is complete, we'll just press OK and we'll do the same thing to the rest of the nodes. After all the export directories are set, we can then come up here to this green button and build our scene. Now I've already built my scene so it does nothing. Now after the scene is built, which may take a while depending on the complexity of your scene, we will can export terrain. Now as you can see, we have three nodes that are going to be exported and are ready to export. Our 2 bitmap and our height output. We can now press export all and we should get a message saying that the following outputs were successfully created. So we can check that by just going to our file and there they are, all three of them. Now we're going to want to open Blender. So with Blender open, we're going to create a plane. And I'm going to scale mine up by 8. After that, we want to go into edit mode by pressing tab and then subdividing our geometry by a couple of times. It doesn't have to be too much. I'm just going to subdivide mine by four cuts. Still in edit mode, we want to go to the top orthographic view and then unwrap our UVs by pressing U and then project from view bounds. We can check that our UV has been successfully created by going to our UV editor and then just getting rid of the render and there we go, we've got a successful UV map. Here's our UV map with our height output overlaid on top just to show that it works. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the UV editor and then I'm going to go to the modifiers tab and I'm going to create a subdivision surface modifier and I'm going to check simple. Next, I want to create a displace modifier and add a new texture. So this will be our displacement texture and this is where we're going to plug in our height field map output. So I'm going to go to our texture and then navigate to it and select my height map. Now, as you can see, it's not looking that great. So what we want to do is come back to our modifiers tab and decrease the med level to zero. And then 
what we want to come up here and do is increase our subdivision count. The view subdivision will subdivide within our view, whereas the render will subdivide when we're rendering. So we want our view subdivision to be lower depending on our system requirements. Now, as you can see, the edges of our mesh are artifacting a bit. We can fix this by going to our image mapping settings in our texture tab. Then we want to select the drop down menu image mapping. And then in the extension settings, we want to set that to extend. And that should fix all of the artifacting problems on the edges. So what that essentially do, does is it extends the outer values infinitely. Our next step is to create the materials. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the cycles render engine as well as the blender internal render engine. So I'll first look at the blender internal render engine. Okay, now let's create our material. So go up to the material tab, new, and we'll name this material landscape. Then I'm going to come up to our texture tab and the first texture that we're going to put in is our diffuse texture. So I'm just going to open that up and I'm going to add a light to the scene so we can see what's actually happening in GLL cell rendering. Okay, it looks like our diffuse texture is being applied correctly. So the next step is to apply our normal map. So we're going to come back to our textures Again, new, then we're going to navigate to our normal map. Then under image sampling, we want to check normal map and then deselect our color in our influence and select normal. So that's just telling Blender Render what this texture is influencing in our material. Then I'm just going to apply a smooth shading method to our geometry. Okay, that's looking really good. I'm just going to get rid of the specularity just so we can see what's going on. And there we go. That is a very basic material for our world machine landscape in the Blender internal render engine. So let's look at the Blender Cycles render engine. To get to the Blender Cycles render engine, we want to come to the top of the screen and change this setting from Blender render to Cycles render. Now, as you can see, if you followed along with this tutorial, our material would have changed. The displacement map is still the same. However, the way that we add and create a material is vastly different. So upon creating a new material, we want to create a new window and select our node editor and we're going to change it to material. So this is our material that we're going to be playing with. We want to add in two image texture nodes and we're going to plug the first one into the diffuse and we're going to select our diffuse material. And then we're going to create another image texture node. To do that, I'm just going to press Shift D and duplicate my already pre-existing node. And I'm going to select the normal map. And then I'm going to create a new normal map node and plug the color into the color data of the normal map and then into the normal. I made an error while recording this video and I didn't change the color space of my normal image texture from color to non-color data. Now I'm just going to play with the lighting of the scene just to give it that bit of oomph and increase the intensity of the light source and there we go we've got our world machine data into blender i hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial if you have give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more content like this please consider subscribing to my channel thank you so much for watching this is hayden falzon from falzonfantasy.com signing off